Hey there, it's Crafty Jennabug. So I have an idea for uh, 2023 that I want to try to accomplish. And what it is, I would like to attempt to do a junk journal page a day for all of 2023. Kind of like a general journaling thing, you know, lots of journal cards, writing about my day, things like that. Um, I realize this is going to be quite a challenge because I can't exactly get in here every day. So what I, what I plan to do is weekly make a video of the pages that I did the, during that week. And I'm hoping that by posting this, I will hold myself accountable <laughs> to actually complete this. I think it would be really cool to, um, to try to junk journal every day. That being said, I've already started making some sheets that can be used in the journal as part of the signature. My daughter and I, we decorated some pages in like a wintry kind of theme for January. We filmed it. So there is video, I can insert it here. For you to see some of that process, it involved a lot of watercolor paints and distress oxides, uh, sprays, the, the distress sprays, and some stencils of snowflakes. So here is what we've got so far. Lots of stenciling. These were the distress sprays just on a book page and my plan is to probably rip them out and use them to decorate. This was the negative of one of, of this stencil, I believe. So I put the stencil on, I sprayed through it, and then I took the stencil and flipped it on this paper and rubbed it really well so that it got that. And I actually like the negatives a bit more than the actual snowflakes themselves. So, say la vie. There's that one. It's kind of messy, but it might make a neat like pocket or something, so I kept it. And that was just on scrap paper or another book page with a stenciled negative. More stencil negatives. Uh, like I said, I really like those. That would be a cool pocket. Stencils, you, I think I use, this is acrylic paint. This light blue is acrylic paint. Um, and I rubbed some gray watercolor with my finger on this page to try to make it a little less stark. I don't know, it just looks dirty, but whatever. I think it's kind of cool. So there's that. And then these are acrylic paint, some silver metallic acrylic paint and some blue. This one was my attempt at making like a snowy scene. I used some watercolors and did some swirls and then I took uh, and I made a snowflake with the watercolor. I distress spray. Um, I used the, both the Distress Oxide Spray and the Distress Spray Stain, gosh that's so hard to say, and sprayed it and then I took some watered down white acrylic paint and made like snowflakes, so I thought it was pretty cool. It's got a neat background, it'll make an interesting journal signature page. This was another attempt at like wind blowing, like snowstorm kind of thing, again watercolors, Distress Sprays and um, watered down white acrylic paint splatter. I think that one's pretty cool. And again, it has a really neat background. This one she also made, and I really like it. Oh wow, that back is cool. Uh, this, she used the Distress Oxide Spray in Prize Ribbon, and she watered it down and spread it all over her paper and sprayed water on it and then did some of the watered down acrylic paint splatter. Like the girl's got an eye. <laughs> definitely impressed with this one and this will definitely be going into the journal. This looks cool too. This was cool. It's um, distress spray stain through a stencil and then lots of distress spray stain on a piece of coffee dyed paper. So I really liked that. It's very abstract. 
another stencil negative, and more stencils. More stencil negatives, I'm sorry, these are stencil negatives, but I love them so much. Uh, and that can be used as like tuck spots and all sorts of things on a coffee dyed paper. Now that I've whittled this down to, I have four sheets from all that stuff we did. I think I need to decorate some more paper. This paper would be cool. I could just cut it down and use it. The other side is white. I could decorate it. So I don't want all of them to be like these pages necessarily. So I could use that or it could be like a half sheet. All right. I'm going to go through some papers and let you know what I figure out. All right, I've gone through my stash. I found this page, which I thought would make a cool half page. And I found this page also. Make another like neat half page. I can trim it if I felt necessary, or I can make it turn it into a pocket against another page. I'm not sure yet. So that gives me six. I figured out I'm going to do 16 individual pages in two signatures of eight pages. That'll give me a little extra to work with in case I decide I want to do a double spread that day. And then I can also work in some extras. I also have chosen a bunch of scrapbooking papers. Junk journaling is all about using what you have. And I have an extensive collection of scrapbook pages that I have collected over the years and that I have been given. Um, so this one I decided is perfect. It's very wintry. I'm just going to cut it across here and use this. It's a little shorter, but I think it'll work. So I, these are pages I need to cut down. Like that one, I have this one, which is very icy and fits the color scheme. This is a really thick page. I may not use it just because of how thick it is, but I love the color on it. It's got a solid colored backside, but we'll see. That one is like a thin cardstock, but I love, I love it. I found this one in a booklet and I thought it was just perfect, the color scheme. I'm going with blues and grays and whites, and so that just fits so perfectly. So that one is a definite. This one is a gray wood grain. I like it. It's cool. I've got this blue, bluish gray stripes and this blue and gray plaid. So that leaves me, let's see, I make a page each of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's 13. Then I've got some pages that I want to decorate a bit more. I've got two sheets of plain copy paper I want to decorate. And then I have this page that I dyed with elderberry. I gave it this like bluish greenish tint and I think I want to decorate that some more also. I also have a, piece, a junk mail envelope that I want to turn into a um, pocket and tuck spot combo thing. So I folded it this way. This is the pocket part. And what I want to do is fold it this way and sew it to the top of a page so that it can be opened like this, used as a pocket, but then also as a tuck spot. I've got to get this glue under control, and I'm gonna try a method I learned from Barbara. She takes a candle and rubs it on the glue so that it no longer becomes sticky. I mean, it's not sticky, but it's, if it gets water on it, it will be reactivated. So I'm going to try rubbing a little piece of beeswax on it. I'm going to go ahead and cut down these pages. Let's see, 
That would leave me 13, 14, 15, 16. Like I said, I don't know about this one. It's so thick. I think that, and it'll be the only thick page. I think I might save this for something else and pick another, uh, and just decorate another um, copy page. I think that's the route I'm going to go. All right, and I forgot to mention, I also have this poem I found in a book of poetry by T.S. Eliot, and it's called The Winter Evening Settles Down. So I want to cut that out, or rip it out. And I used blue watercolor to um, to color the page so that it fits the mood of the page. So I'm going to use that at some point. All right, getting rid of this one. All right, I have a piece of the gray wood grain already cut down, so I think I'll just use it. That looks really cool. Okay. Awesome. This. I thought about having the wood grain go this way, but I like it this way. All right, so I'm going to cut pages down and get my workspace set up for decorating these other pages and I'll be back. Okay, I've got these four pages and this envelope that I want to decorate. I have a few different colors. I've got this slate gray by Apple Barrel, acrylic paint. I have um, Anita's metallic silver. I have three different blues, blue bonnet, slate blue, and periwinkle. And I also have these two Distress Sprays, Salty Ocean and Prized Ribbon. Um, I also brought back out some of the stencils that I used. And I think I'll make use of those as well. While those papers dry, I want to uh, stencil some snowflakes on these. Everything is dry. I'm going to give you a look through. This envelope, of course, is going to be a tuck spot and a pocket folded over a page. I decided what I want to do is I'm going to sew around it. Maybe not that part, but I'm going to sew around it this way. And then when I fold it over the page, I'll sew it across the top when I figure out which page. And I'll sew it just on the edge so that it can hopefully still flip and utilize this as a pocket. I'm pretty stoked about that. And I guess I could do it this way, on the side of a page. But I think I like it better as a flip up kind of deal. Anywho, so that's the plan for this. 
but I'm going to figure out what page I want it on. This one might be one of my favorite. It has beautiful silver splatter all over it, and then this one single large snowflake half. The back is white, which is fine. I think having a few white pages in there will break up some of the blues a little bit. And I can always decor. I'm, the plan is to decorate the white parts while it's in the journal. So that one. This one, pretty simple with snowflakes on the back. Snowflakes stenciled on there, nothing on the other side. This one I felt it was good enough on its own, nothing on the other side. These two I did nothing to, I will decorate another time. I like this one a lot also. That's one of the ones my daughter made. And that's the one I made, one I made. This, I just grunged up a bit. So I, yeah, this was a piece of um, copy paper I did today. So I did the gray. And I love it. I really love it. I think this turned out really cool. It would be neat to see it in the book. This one also very bluish, purplish. And I plan on decorating these pages more. This one turned out really cool. I just used some of the watered down silver. Oh, let me show you the back of these. These are pretty plain on the back, but that's okay. It's just where the um, distress spray went through. This one has silver specks all over it, and it is the back side to this. I didn't like how much brown, because it was a coffee dyed page, and you can still see a lot of brown here. I didn't like how brown it was on this side, as this was the negative side, yeah. So I just painted that one blue and silver and splattered some silver, and you can see where I did the relief of the snowflake a little bit in there. This one is pretty cool. That's the back of that one. This one I intend to put in as a pocket, just fold it up in there and then I can glue it down to the page next to it on either side. I do like this side better than this side, so I might do this side. And this, also not my favorite, but I don't hate how it turned out. It will probably just be covered with something. And this one's really cool. You can see the gray paint I scraped on there, not scraped, I um, smeared on there with the brush, kind of like a dry brushing technique. And then I did a bunch of spraying of the Distress sprays. This one turned out really cool, both on the front and the back. And I can always stencil snowflakes or something on them. I didn't want all of the papers to have snowflakes. Like, yes, it's winter but I don't want them all to have snowflakes. All right, I have these mostly assembled. I wanna add, let's see, okay, let's, let's just do a flip through real quick. I have two envelopes here and I would like to add them. This one I'm just gonna cut off and I'm debating whether or not I want to go ahead and decorate these or just decorate them while they're in the journal. So this would be signature one. You know what? That needs something there. That's an envelope. I think I'm going to tuck it here and make, make it a tuck spot or something. Work it into this page. I don't know. Or that. I'm not sure yet. And that's the middle of the signature. That will go there. Like that. Okay. 
this one. So this one has two envelopes. This one has no envelopes. Interesting. And I can always flip this so that it goes on this page if I wanted. You know what, that would be really pretty as the middle of the signature. I need more grays in here, I think. thinking about making the center. So if I do that, how does that feel? Yeah, I'll leave it like it was. So then this one has no envelope pockets. I think that'll work. Awesome. So I've got my signatures figured out. Now I've got to make the journal cover, which is going to be made out of paper bag. So I will go get the paper bag and start figuring that out. All right. I am just using a Dollar Tree bag. And I think this is going to be a great size. First, I learned this method from Barbara from 49 Dragonflies. The first thing I want to do is open this side up. cover. I need to sew around it and we'll go from there. I have sewn around my book cover. I did really small stitches and then a bigger stitch and I just kind of did it all haphazardly around. This side, the back side, the wrong side I guess it is in fabric, it's a little, little crazy. It's not as cute. I was having some issues with my bobbin. So I decided I want to cover it in fabric. So, what I've got to do first is cover this in white paint so that, one, the fabric I've chosen for this side is this, and you can kind of see the dark letters through it. So just to be safe, I'm going to cover this side in white acrylic paint, and then I will put the fabric down when I'm ready. I'm not doing that yet because I want to make that to be the last thing after I'm done painting. I have another fabric I'm considering for the front and that's this, but 
it looks a little too industrial for me. Like it looks like, you know what? I'm just going to cover both sides in fabric. This fabric is a bit thicker, but you can still kind of see the dark. So I'm going to have to gesso it as well. So to the, to the gessoing. Oh, I also went ahead and sewed around this pocket. I don't think I want these long strings to be as long as they are. But I went ahead and sewed around the pocket. I did zigzags and a small running stitch. So this is perfect. A little tuck spot. And then you can flip it on both sides. Another little tuck spot. Oh, that ripped. I'll have to glue that down. I had a feeling that might happen. I was having some difficulty with my bobbin. And uh, so then my little, then a little pocket. Cool. So I will glue that down a little while. That is that. Gesso time, or white acrylic paint time. All right. So I have covered both sides in white acrylic paint and I once that was dry I glued down fabric to the front and the back this is going to be the outside cover and I think I'm going to decorate some of it and this is the inside cover and I've already marked where I want my spine to be so next comes the cutting or next comes the poking of the holes to sew through because I'm going to sew in my signatures with a three hole pamphlet stitch and I cut a little template out of graph paper and it is the length what I sorry, what I did to figure out where I want my spine is I took my signatures and I laid them down I closed it up and I figured out where they are, where they stop, on the top and the bottom, leaving a little bit of border around. And then, so I marked those with pencil, and I just cut this to fit in there. So what I want to do is use this graph paper to figure out where to poke the holes. And I'm going to align one signature on this line and one signature on this line. So I've got to figure out the center. And then the center, you know, thirds basically. So that is where I will poke my holes. Here, here, and here. This fold line, this fold line is the center, and this fold line is the bottom hole. poke holes in the middle of my signatures, figure out, get some clamps. So I can ensure my pages are all where I want them to be. Signature is ready to sew in. Okay. So I'm going to take some thread 
This is just plain embroidery thread. Typically you want it to be three times the spine, three times the length of the spine. I have more than enough, awesome. All right, I'm gonna sew the second signature in first. Start in the center, in the center hole, and then pull through. But you want to leave enough of a tail that you can still tie. I'm going to use some washi tape just to stick that down. And then we're going to go up through this top hole. And then in the top hole in the signature. And then down all the way to the bottom hole. And then through the middle. But you want to make sure that you don't split this second, or you, you don't split the beginning. Um, oh, I didn't even go through the hole. Make sure you don't split the strand that you already have in. And then carefully through there, best if you get it on the other side. Oh, I split the strand, damn. There we go. So, like that. And you want the strand, the ends, to be on either side of this middle string. Pull tight. I cut this shorter to be a little bit easier to manage. Pull tight, and then just a square knot. I'm actually going to do a square knot, and then tie a bow. Like you would for tying your shoes. And you can cover those, you can glue them down, what have you. So then, that is one signature in the book. Now for the second one. Awesome. That is quite exciting. Sweet. A book. There's my journal for January. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, so yeah, I hope you have enjoyed the video. It was a little bit of a lengthy one, but uh, overall I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out gonna have a lot of fun decorating this over the next month and I hope you enjoy watching me decorate it so pretty excited this is this is really cool I love this this is probably my favorite I might glue some of these down to make them pockets, I'm not sure yet. 
but I'm pretty stoked. Sweet. So, this concludes the making of the January junk journal. It already wants to stay open. I'll have to put it under a book so that it can stay closed. Um, this was a lot of fun to make. I enjoyed myself. It's been a little while since I made a journal and first time I've ever made one using a paper bag. Maybe I will experiment with different um, different materials for making covers in, in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in January as I decorate the inside of this and the outside of it. I'm still not sure. I might cover the spine. I think I've got some ribbon for that. But as for now, we're gonna we're gonna end this one. And I hope uh, hope to see you throughout January as I decorate the pages in this. Have a great day. Bye.